The stock up 1.4%. So clearly there was a little bit of uncertainty still as to whether this would go ahead or not. Yeah, I mean, it's always a crapshoot, right? You have a commission that they'd actually gone to the trouble of trying to circumvent at one point, and that law was ruled un unconstitutional, which is why it's been sort of dragging on in the state for quite so long. But yeah, I think this clears a major state hurdle. Now, of course, we'll see all the lawsuits come in in reaction to it. Did President Trump's election make it more likely that Nebraska would vote yes, or are the two entirely separate? Well, the two are separate. Uh, the Nebraska State Commission has five members, as you mentioned, of three, a three to two vote. Four Republicans, one Democrat. They're all state elected. So they aren't necessarily, you know, they aren't appointed by someone as happens in other states. So, I mean, the, the issues are separate. It was interesting to see uh, when the president, when President Trump announced his decision on Keystone XL, that he had the CEO of TransCanada in the office with him. And he was very excitedly asking him when he was going to be putting, uh, you know, sort of shovels in the ground. And Russ Gerling's response was, I still need to talk to Nebraska about that. So, again, this is a major hurdle, but we will see a, a lot more responses, legal responses, I suspect, coming from So what happens next? Does TransCanada still need to wait, or can they literally start, now they have permission, can they start uh, sticking shovels in the ground? They can start doing the work they need to do. It, it might end up being a lot like Dakota Access, where you get kind of 90% of it built, and then part of it is subject to court and Junctions, depending on what happens. Um, but I suspect they're quite eager to get working. This is still probably a two-year construction process, all told, so it's not going to be up and running tomorrow.